This is for my professional responsibility class. We're continuing our series about ABA model rule 1.7 and conflicts of interest. Here we're going to be talking about some conflicts that uh, the, the model rule 1.7 simply forbids lawyers from uh, uh, undertaking and to provide representation, even if the client consents. So let's dive in. Sometimes it's not enough to get the client's informed consent, even in writing, to proceed with the representation for certain types of conflicts of interest. And we call these non-consentable conflicts. So you may remember that under 1.7b, it permits a lawyer to proceed with the representation in most cases, notwithstanding a conflict of interest between concurrent clients, if all the affected clients give informed consent in writing. But this is subject to a few conditions, and these are fleshed out in comments 14 through 17 to rule 1.7. So when these conditions are not met, the conflicts are what we call non-consentable. So in that case, it would be improper for the lawyer even to ask for consent or to agree to provide representation even if consent is offered or volunteered from the clients. So what are these conditions? Well, there's basically three uh, general conditions, B1, B2, and B3. B1 is a reasonableness condition. It's reasonable to think the lawyer can still provide competent and diligent representation to each client. It's hard to quantify this or give specific examples, but there could be a situation where the clients have a conflict and one of the clients is going to pay, place uh, such demands on the lawyer that the lawyer couldn't reasonably think they could competently represent the other party as well. B2 and B3 are more interesting. B2 talks about that there's no other law prohibiting representation in these cases, and B3 says that the lawyer is not representing opposing parties in the same litigation. In other words, trying to be the lawyer for the plaintiff and the defendant. So what do we mean by prohibited by law? Well, the comments explain for B2 that in some states, there's state statutes or state court case law providing that the same lawyer may not represent more than one defendant in death penalty cases, even if the clients consent because the stakes are so high in that situation. Also, there's a few federal criminal statutes that prohibit certain representations by former government lawyers, regardless of consent. These are basically anti-corruption uh, statutes designed to um, shield public officials from conflicts of interest. B3 is what I call the sitcom scenario sometimes in class, because I, there's a few sitcoms that have run this joke of a trial where the same lawyer is running back and forth between the plaintiff's lawyer and the defense uh, the plaintiff's table and the defense table in the courtroom trying to represent both, objecting to his own um, evidence and uh, disagreeing with himself during his closing arguments and so forth. Well, comment 17 says that that type of situation is simply not consentable. Um, if the clients are aligned against each other in the same litigation or other proceeding before a tribunal, um, you it doesn't matter if they want to save money and ha share a lawyer or uh, have the same lawyer and are willing to give written con consent, the lawyer can't proceed with that type of representation. The conflict is just too severe and um, would interfere with the administration of justice. Now, usually it's going to be pretty clear that the lawyer is trying to represent both parties, but not always. And one of the subtle examples is there's a lot of family law practitioners who would be willing to do an non uncontested divorce for a couple, basically if they've already agreed to dissolve the marriage and there's no children and no custody issues, and they've even agreed on the um, division of the marital property up front, there are lawyers who will go ahead and just do the uncontested divorce in theory for both of them as clients. Now, for my class and for purposes of the MPRE, I think that's the wrong answer. Whether this is common in practice or tolerated by state bars is another issue. But on the MPRE, your rule of thumb is 
If the same lawyer is representing both names on each side of the V in a case, that's a non-consentable conflict. The lawyer can't do that, even if the clients give informed consent confirmed in writing. And so uh, I think the technically accurate answer for the MPRE is even if the parties have already agreed up front to settle the litigation, um, like in an uncontested divorce, the same lawyer cannot be the lawyer of record in a court filing for the plaintiff and the defendant um, or for each party in litigation, um, no matter what, really. And so um, that's the test answer. And what you will encounter in practice sometimes might be a different story. Keep in mind that you can't be the defense lawyer and the plaintiff's lawyer in the same litigation. And you can't represent um, people if there's a law, either a statute or case law, that prohibits that specific type of representation in your situation. That concludes this part of our discussion of 1.7, and we'll continue with other um, parts of the comments to 1.7 in the next lecture.